This is a video to show implementation of GSM architecture in OpenGL and also how to do it. The first part shows the animation of GSM architecture and the next part deals with the code. This is a, a video to show communication between two mobile phones through the GSM architecture. So this is the scenario. Nikki thinks of calling Mini. So he dials her number. So when Mickey dials Minnie's number on his mobile, his mobile will be connected to the corresponding tower through a series of signals. The signals will be in the air interface. So this is how the signals will travel and uh, the mobile station will be connected to the tower. Tower is also called BTS, that is Base Transmission Station. So this is the complete GSM architecture. Mobile is connected to the tower. Next, the BTS will be connected to BSE. BSE is Base Switching Center. They will be connected through the ABS interface. The BSC will get connected to MSC. MSC is Mobile Switching Center, which will also have databases such as HLR, VLR, and AUC is an authentication center. So, or AUC sends some data to the mobile, and mobile encrypts it and returns. So, AUC can check whether the call is coming from the right mobile or no. And then, when it authenticates, the call is forwarded. MSC will search for the receiver's MSC through the HLR. And when it gets the receiver's MSC, the call is forwarded there. The MSC will forward the call to the BSC and BTS, and the BTS will um, they broadcast the call, and the corresponding mobile will get connected. And this receiver's call, receiver's mobile also has to be authenticated. So the receiver's MSC's a authentication center will send some code to the mobile, and the mobile will encrypt it and send back. So that the authentication center can match the two data and authenticate the call. Then the two mobile calls are connected, mobile phones are connected, and this is the complete GSM architecture. So now Mickey and Minnie can communicate happily. Now that we have seen the animation of GSM architecture, let us try to understand. How this can be implemented using OpenGL? First, le let us try to draw a cube. A cube can be drawn using three two-dimensional arrays. The first one is the faces array, which will hold the six faces of the cube. The next one will hold the normals to the six faces of the cube, and another one will, will, will hold the eight vertex points. Using these values. We can uh, iterate through the array and draw the cube. We have written a draw box function which will perform this task for us. Okay, now let us try to understand how our cylinder can be drawn on the screen. We are using the GLUT API to draw a cylinder on the screen. A call to GLU cylinder with a GLU quadratic ob object can help us in drawing a particular cylinder. The parameters taken by this particular function are the GLU quadratic object, a base radius, a top radius, height, slices, and stack. So, now that we saw how to draw 3D objects, that is cube and cylinder. So, in texture mapping, we have used mobile and VSC. We use .emp image file that we create image object and pass it to load texture. Let's see what it does. Load texture will take the image and map it to texture and returns integer value 
used for texture mapping. Now let's see how it does. Here we use that integer to bind it to the object using text coordinate. This is how we do it in texture mapping. We are now that we have used texture mapping. Now we will see external objects including in included in OpenGL. First, let's see dot obj object. We have used this to draw a tower. We have used a library glm dot h. So if we want to draw a object model, we call these functions. Draw model underscore box. Now let's see what they do. So in this function, this is the call that actually reads the object and creates the mo model object. GLM draw. This will draw the object on the screen. We have included dot TGA images to display all the characters in our code. Now let's see how it is done. We have to load the image using setup RC function. In that, we call the load TGA function which will load the image into an array of bytes. And this is how we display it. And to play the sound, we have used these functions that is the play sound function. So now let's talk about camera and lighting. Our uh, animation has the following options to move around the scenario. So let us see how these options are implemented. Uh, to implement these options, we first use an object which is of type C camera. This uh, object has the following methods which allow us to uh, move around the scenario. Next we move on to the key down that is this function handles whenever we press a key button of appropriate method will be called. This is the key down function. As you can see for each key press we uh, implement a method an appropriate method. Now uh, we come to the function init light. Uh, this function basically allows us to position the different uh, light sources and also the colors of these light sources. Uh, totally we have three light sources. So we have implemented three light sources and uh, uh, the function used to activate these light sources are these. As, as you can see uh, the function has three parameters. The first one uh, allows us to define which light source and the second parameter tells uh, helps us to enable the color or the position and uh, the third parameter allows us to supply the uh, required array for it. So this is uh, this is how we have implemented light source uh, we have defined our light sources uh, to uh, initialize or, or we can say to activate these light sources we have written some lines in the function void uh, in the function void initialize. So these are the lines here we enable light source 1, 2, 0, 1 and 2 respectively. 